Hello everyone, welcome back to Speaking Spurs and me here on Talking All Things Tottenham with more positivity to talk about um, after another win in the Premier League. Let's keep this run going, fingers crossed. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps it grow. Don't forget to pull it with a like and please leave your comments below to keep the conversation going. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Harry Kane marked his 400th appearance for Tottenham with a goal from the spot in the 2-0 victory over Everton, which keeps us in the hunt for Premier League glory. Fingers crossed we can get there, you know, if Arsenal have a slump and uh, Manchester City also have a major slump. Lampard's visit has frustrated us throughout in the first half. They passed up two golden opportunities of their own. Uh, Damari Gray and Amadou Anana blew their one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Uh, Lampard said if we took one of those, we probably don't lose the game. Uh, Jordan Pickford, moments after a stunning stop from Kane at the start of the second half, then made a costly error himself after spilling a shot from Matt Doherty and then brought down Harry Kane as he scrambled to recover. Kane obviously scored and missed from the spot in the Champions League Wednesday, uh, but no nerves uh, at all from that. Thumped home his penalty in front of the South Stand. He's now got nine goals in 10 games and he's enjoying a superb start to the uh, Premier League season. And he's now scored in five Premier League games in a row for the first time. So another little record, this time an individual one of his own he's broken. But for Richarlison, um, his fellow forward, it was less of a reward in the evening um, who had his reunion with former club Everton cut short after a calf injury um, however Antonio Conte took the opportunity when he had to take Richarlison off to switch to a 3-5-2 as we extended our 100% home record for this season with some authority from then on um, Hoybier was the man that wrapped up the win with a deflected finish on 86 minutes so with this victory it means we've made our best start to a Premier League season after 10 games. And although we remain third, we're now level with second place Manchester City, who could have extended their lead on us, but for Liverpool coming to the rescue. So they actually lost that game to Liverpool, um, while Arsenal, as much as it pains me, they won their last game at Leeds um, to open up the four-point gap above us at the top. Um, and then Everton, who suffered defeat on the road for the first time in four matches, stayed 12. So if we look at the last season's fixture, we actually thrashed Everton 5-0 um, in March. But Lampard's side boasts the joint best defensive record in the division ahead of kickoff, um, And they've proven to be more re resolute than they were last season. Their game plan was pretty clear from the first whistle with Dwight McNeil dropping into a left wing-back role to add extra defensive cover in their 5-3-2, and the visitors were able to limit us to barely a handful of chances, half chances, in fact, in the opening period. There was the header over from Richarlison, a half-hearted penalty shout for Sonny, uh, and a deflected shot from Kane, but no real threat on Pickford's goal whatsoever. Instead, it was actually Everton who had the best openings before the break. First, Gray blasted over after he rolled Benton Core to get in on goal from a long ball. Um, I actually, if you look at the replay slowly, it looked like it bobbled up just before he hit it. Um, Lampard's frustration on the touchline was plain to see, but he was doubly incensed just before half time when a dreadful mix up between Romero and Hoybier in midfield allowed Anana to storm through and then send an equally woeful finish into the stands. Um, in between those big chances, Pickford was alert to smother a Kane run in the box and then beat Son to a through ball before Richarlison saw a deflected effort from distance spin wide. Um, but us back in action at our home ground less than 72 hours after beating Eintracht Frankfurt in the Champions League were flat and we're pretty short on spark really, no creativity. Richarlison scored 53 goals in four seasons at Everton. Um, but that would be his last major contribution in this game. Uh, and he would have been relishing this one. He would have hoped to go on and absolutely smash it in the second half. But he was frustratingly forced off um, with an injury just five minutes into the second half. Bazuma then came on in his place. And soon after a rejig in formation, we were ahead. Pickford showed lightning reactions to keep out a Kane effort. Um, but with our very next attack, he fumbled a routine stop from Doherty. It was a lovely move, just a pretty weak shot from Doherty. It was pretty central. Um, he's then spilled it. Kane's pounced onto the loose ball. 
and then Pickford has brought him down, leaving the referee no option, no option but to award a penalty, and there was no stop in this one. He drilled the penalty and celebrated just as emphatically in front of the huge stand of Spurs supporters behind the goal. Kane then tried for a second as we pushed forwards, but it was Hoybier who proved to be the unlikely match clincher. Scored a few goals this season. I think he's, what, three goals, three assists now. Um, with Everton pushing on, there was space at the back when Bentancourt sent the ball across the edge of the area and the Denmark midfielder clipped in a shot off of Alex Awobi to seal three points before making a tribute to the club's late fitness coach, Gian Piero Ventroni, with his celebration. Um, the Hoybier goal it was actually it was a nice one in a sense because he had the ball at his feet Sonny was there for the overlap and could have used him and I think the defenders actually thought that was what was going to happen he used the defender in front of him to mask his shot but Pickford actually reacted pretty well if that hadn't have deflected off Iwobi I actually think Pickford was going to save it so the deflection um, came in and saved us there um Conte, with his substitution, he may have been tempted to bring on Lucas Moura or Brian Hill to keep the formation the same. He didn't. He put Bazuma in there. It changed the formation. It meant that Hoybier and Bentoncourt could occupy slightly wider roles, which meant we could push further up the field. And it just gave us a bit more balance in this game. Um, and it also meant... Um, that the wing-backs could push up. They weren't as anywhere near as high in the first half, to be honest. Uh, it was actually really hard for them. They were getting outnumbered in midfield. And then, you know, it's quite simple. You get more bodies in the middle or uh, get around the middle area, you're more likely to control the game. Um, Antonio Conte said, I was not surprised, um, but to see the intensity we played with tonight in this game, it was for me really positive because it means you work in the right way. The performance of your players is always up. We played only two days ago, but I've seen my players run from the start to the end, and I'm really delighted, especially for the players, because this performance repays the effort they do every day in the training sessions. I changed the system for the characteristics of the squad. Uh, we can play with three strikers or with three midfielders. And at that moment, I preferred to pick Bazuma because Lucas Moura is only one week working with us. And in this moment, his physical condition is not at the top and we needed to play 40 minutes. And for this reason, I decided to pick Bazuma. Um, the other option was Hill, but he's young, a good prospect who is improving. But at the moment, we needed a player more prepared, also to be strong physically. Everton is a team really strong physically, after the win, I think my decision was good. I'm really happy for our fans when you play and have an unbelievable atmosphere and they sing our names and make us proud about it. They give us a lot of push to give more and more for this club. Um, let's talk about Matt Doherty and a little bit about Perisic as well. So Perisic came back in for Sessignon. Um, Doherty obviously is still deputising for Emerson Royale, who after his suspension is still not in the squad. He and, you know, both Matt Doherty and even Perisic were playing in flying style that the Italian system requires and thrives upon. And both were involved in most of Tottenham's best moments of the match. Doherty has been working incredibly hard behind the scenes. Um, he looks fitter and leaner than ever before. You know, you can compare uh, photos from, you know, his previous seasons up until now. He's got prominent cheekbones um, with photos across his career. And he, he's... You know, he's been Premier League fit before, but he's never been what we would call Conte fit. And it looks like he's on his way there, despite the fact that, you know, Conte has criticised his fitness levels of late. Um, and this performance was the reward of his efforts. Um, you could see Doherty getting more and more confident in this game with each passing minute as he felt sharper and sharper, culminating at one point late in the second half with an impudent back heel during a move. Um, you know, and he started the match quite tentatively with his attacking, but there was a moment in the first half. It was when he burst down the right and was fouled by Dwight McNeil, he, um, which earned the Everton man a yellow card. And that moment there, I think, energised Doherty, and Conte could be seen in the tunnel at half time speaking um, with his team. Um, <clears throat> yeah, speaking with Doherty and the team as they waited to emerge. Um, the Doherty of the second half, though, he did everything Conte asked of his wing-backs. He was attacking at every opportunity. Um, he defended pretty much everything that came his way. Uh, the build-up to our first goal um, was the perfect example of his strengths being utilised. 
Uh, and in true Conte wing-back style, Perisic curled in a deep cross um, that Doherty then caught first time with his left foot. Although it wasn't a, a great shot, he got the connection, it was on target. Pickford then spilled it and, you know, we know what happened after that. Kane fouled, penalty scored. So without the work of the two wing-backs getting up there, you know, that doesn't happen. Does it happen if Emerson Royale's on the pitch? Probably not. Um, Kane obviously netted the spot kick after that and, the, and uh, he was delighted for Doherty, one of his closest friends at the club. He said, I'm really happy for him. He's been waiting for his opportunity since he got injured last season. He's had to be patient this year, just biding his time, working hard and getting as fit as possible, just waiting for his chance. Um, we've got good competition for places. He's come in and I think he's been fantastic in the two games he's played. I'm delighted for him. I know him really well and I know how much he wants to do well and how much he's been working behind the scenes. The performance will only give him confidence and it will uh, give the team and the manager confidence. It's really good to have a lot of players playing well. Conte was also delighted with the performance of the Irishman and uh, what it means for the games ahead. So he said... About Matthew, honestly, I'm really happy, really happy. He played a good game against Brighton, but today he played better than the last game. He played well in the last game and I was happy also with it, but today I see again the Matt Doherty of last season. And if you remember, the back end of last season, I, I thought he was pretty good and we all expected him to come in this season and keep that spot. But, um, you know, obviously his injury has prevented him from doing that and... You know, for the most part, defensively, Royale's been doing well. We've just been lacking an attack. Um, he then went on to say, I'm really pleased, and said to him, and this is when he came off the pitch, I think, he was uh, hugging him and talking when he made the substitution. He says, finally, now you are the player that I know. Um, it's important. It's important for us because to play all these games in a short period, it's important to have all the players available. Then on the other flank, Perisic, he also looked more like the wing-back Conte turned into one of the best at Inter. Um, there is a theory among some back in South Korea that when even Perisic plays, Son doesn't play as well. Um, and that Perisic actually gets into the box more than Son does. Now, some fans have even gone as far to say that Perisic doesn't pass to Son, but that's absolute rubbish. But while the numbers actually support the first theory... Son's five goals so far have all come with Ryan Sessegnon on the pitch rather than Perisic. Um, although it should be stressed that all of those goals only came in two matches. As for the second claim, Perisic does pass to Son quite frequently actually. And the two players um, linked up really well against Everton, especially on a number of occasions early on. In the first half, the Croatians set up a big chance for Son, curling across into the attacker um, in the six-yard box. But the South Korean misjudged his header. So, Son's fault, not Perisic's. Um, the ball struck his shoulder the rather than his head and bouncing into Pickford's arms. Um, as for Perisic being in the box, that's the Conte way that he wants his wing back and exactly what um, he wants from Sessegnon as well to make those runs into the back post. Um, in the 3-4-3, three, three, the role of the two players either side of Kane is to act as number 10. So, they drop into the middle just deeper than Kane um, in a role that can encompass running through the middle out wide and also tracking back. No role in the Conte system is set in a certain way. Everyone has instructions galore, um, which is what makes him such a demanding coach. Perisic, at the end of the day, is one of the world's best wing backs in Conte's eyes. And it's early days and his partnership um, with one of the world's best forwards in Sun, who is so important to Tottenham um, and played well against Everton. You know, it's going to come eventually. Uh, both of them, they're top draw players and they just need to learn each other's game. It, it takes time at the end of the day. Uh, the understanding will grow and grow. Look how long it took for Kane and Son to click. And when they did, they really clicked. Um, so the 3-5-2 formation, though, when used, will force Son into a more advanced striker role, closer to Kane. And that could also help him get more goal involvements. Um, speaking of Perisic, Conte said, even Perisic today played in the way that I know him. Also, even for his injury before, um, before he struggled a bit to have a good performance. Yes, normal performance, but my expectation about him uh, more like today to play like the top. Um, you know, and that, that's it at the end of the day. Um, 
the injury did quite clearly hold Perisic back. It meant towards the end of the games, you see him struggling a little bit. There's a reluctance at times to break past um, his opposition fullback or, or winger. Um, I think, look, he's getting there and he also knows he's got Ryan Sessegnon breathing down his neck. Both of them um, have got the capabilities to play really well in that role. And I think, you know, Sessegnon will learn a lot from Perisic. But on the whole, in this performance, again, we, we didn't start great and we became much better once we had that extra man in midfield. And I think it's going to become um, more relevant against these tough teams to break down that we will probably see a lot of the time um, Conte will start with the system he prefers and then push another man into midfield and that should flip the game on his head. Um, you know, teams are always going to have a few men back defensively when playing against us when we've got the three up top because they know the, the ability... Harry Kane has to pick up the ball and play an excellent through ball. Son's ability and speed to just ghost past the defenders. Or if you get on a, in a one-on-one -on -one sprint with Son, you know, more often than not, he's going to win that. Um, and then on the flip side, Richarlison, when he's on the ball, he's got, a, he's got an okay amount of pace. There's no doubt about that. But he's strong on the ball as well. He's tenacious. So all of them offer something different. Kulisevsky, similarly to um, Richarlison with his strength, you know, they're completely different players, but they've both got that strength. They're hard to knock off the ball. So, you know, the three up top does have its benefits. And then if it's not working, you put the extra man in midfield and that gives uh, Hoybier and Benton Core more of a freedom. Or if Bazuma decides to use his box-to-box -box abilities, Hoybier or Benton Core then stays back to cover. So actually, we've got these two systems that can be used at any time throughout games. And if we, we start with the 3-5-2, there's no reason why we can't switch to the 3-4-3 um, three, three later in the game. So it's good options. I'm happy with it. Um, I think a lot of players in this game played really well. And, you know, we're in a position where it's becoming tough for places in that squad. Everyone's having to fight. And even when we rotate now, nobody's coming in having a bad game. Like, you look at it, Perisic and Sessegnon are both playing well. Doherty has played two games in the Premier League and played quite well in the first one but in this second game in the second half that's the Doherty that we wanted to sign uh, Emerson Royale offers us the defensive um, capabilities we saw Jed Spence actually come on and was rewarded with a few minutes although he didn't actually uh, do anything on the pitch because he was brought on in uh, injury time just to waste a bit of time three substitutions in one hit um, but nonetheless he's earned his reward and got himself on this so we've got three options there Long layers looked pretty solid every time he's come in for um, Ben Davis. And then Romero, when we bring him off, if he's on a card or towards the end of a game, Sanchez has come in and done well. The only player that's really been irreplaceable in that defence has been Eric Dyer. Um, obviously, Tanganga's meant to be his replacement. Joe Roden was his replacement, but he's obviously on loan. And then, yeah, anyone in that front three, Richarlison will play through the middle, the left, the right, Kulosevsky can play on the right, but actually he can play through the middle. When he first went to Juventus, um, he actually scored on his debut and he scored a few goals in his, his first few starts for them. So look, he can play through the middle as well. Son can play through the middle on the left. I don't particularly like him on the right, but when he's out there, he can cut in and, and whip him with that left foot like we saw against Leicester, not just this season, but last season as well. And then in the midfield, Bazuma can come in and do a job. Skip's only going to get better and better as his match sharpness comes back. Uh, Hoybier and Benton Kors seem pretty irreplaceable for the majority of it. So look, we're in a good position. We really are. Um, and I think we're kind of going under the radar in the Premier League because Arsenal are performing so well and Man City have Erling Haaland scoring a bag full of goals. We're kind of just... We're, we're going about our business in a quiet way, but... You know, I think it's because we're not actually setting the stage alight when we're on the pitch. We're going in there, we're battling hard, we're grinding out results, so we are going under the radar. And that's a good position to be in. Um, because when those teams do slip, hopefully we've now got the capabilities to pounce and finally take advantage and get rid of that stupid Spursy title that we've got. Um, and in the Champions League, we got a bit lucky there. We've won and teams around us that you would have expected to pick up points, haven't. So, you know, it looks like we could end up finishing top of the group there, which could potentially give us an easier game in the next round. So look, at the moment, things are going well for Spurs. There's not too much to moan about, really. Um, I mean, even in goal, if Lloris, God forbid, does need cover, there's a very capable goalkeeper in Fraser Forster there. Um, so I have to say, I'm happy that Conte... Um, 
is starting to realise that that bulking out the midfield at certain times of the game is the better option. However, based on his quote saying that Lucas Moore has only been back for a week, I do worry that had Moore been back for, I don't know, maybe two weeks, he might have pushed him into that game and kept us in the 3-4-3 and maybe not gone for the 3-5-2 until later on. But look, the way it worked out was perfect. We're on a good run. There's lots to be happy about. Um, so that's it for that one. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please, please smash your comments below. Keep the conversation going. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help it grow. Um, make sure you pop it with a like. If you've got any Spurs friends or whatever, share it with them. Get them on there to give a watch. But thank you so much. Take care. And until next time, come on you Spurs.